evening and a very warm welcome to this special Choice International Zoom event. Please use the chat function to indicate to us your name and surname and where you are logging in from. We welcome you here this evening to this very special international Zoom event for the choice. Please use the chat function to indicate to us your name and surname and where you are logging in from. Our Master of Ceremonies for tonight is none other than Marte Saporta Rotheisen, producer of the choice. Thank you for joining the Choice Netflix series Zoom event. While we allow for participants to join, please use the chat function to let us know who you are and where you are from. My name is Juanita Kapp and I am accompanied this evening by Sue Hayes and we are from the border team, The Choice in Queenstown. With us on the border team and joining us this evening, is Neil Newman from East London, Rose McDougall from Queenstown, and Natasha Maharaj from Centurion. We are going to give it a few more moments. While we allow for participants to join, please use the chat function to let us know who you are and where you are from. A little bit of background on how the border team in Queenstown was born. In December 2020, Sue Hayes, a very good friend of mine, lent me the book, The Choice to Read. Like many of you that are joining us this evening, the story of Liz and what she went through for the sake and the name of the Lord absolutely captivated my heart as this love story unfolded. Sue and I then had a meeting together and we decided to get involved with this wonderful project. And pretty soon our team grew. Neil Newman joined us as well as Rose McDougall and Natasha Maharaj. It is such a privilege this evening to be a part of this wonderful event as we know that God is going to transform hearts and minds through the choice. We give over to you Rose for the opening prayer. Baruch ato Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Blessed are you, O Lord God, Creator of the world, Almighty Father. We welcome you in our midst this evening and come humbly before you, knowing that without you we can do nothing properly. But with you, Lord, everything that is of eternal significance, of eternal value, is blessed. We praise you and pray this by the power of your almighty name, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Amen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Martez Supporter Rortezen. I have been in the film industry for over 30 years now, both in front and behind the camera. And it is a great honor to be here with you all this evening as producer of the incredible biographical series, based on the choice book authored by Elizabeth Robertson Campbell. I have been walking the road of the choice with Liz since meeting her at a function in 2013 and falling in love with her story. My journey began holding her hand when Liz asked me to attend a meeting with film creatives. Before I knew it, I produced a teaser for promotional purposes in 2014 to help guide the process. My role as supporting a friend changed into something deeper when director Doron Eran came on board our project and shortly thereafter found myself standing in for Liz at a meeting with Bruce MacDonald, owner of Boomtown Films, four years after introducing the choice story to him. We have an incredible lineup of speakers this evening, author and artist Elizabeth Robertson Campbell, 
Her husband, Jamie Campbell, who sits on our executive team and is the reason why we find ourselves here today. Our director, Daron Eron from Israel. Our screenwriter, Omri Rose, usually based in California, but now also in Israel. Our executive producer from Cape Town, Bruce McDonald, now based in Portugal and Jackie DeLange, managing editor of Joy Magazine. We have quite the international theme going on. To have some fun and show our immense gratitude for your presence this evening, I will be announcing the recipients of a few specially selected gifts. Our first speaker this evening is none other than Elizabeth Robertson Campbell, author of The Choice Book. Elizabeth's account of astonishing true life events that began in 1983 made it into the hands of publisher James Campbell in 2001. Jamie was so captivated by Liz's love for God, her incredible spirit and beautiful heart, that he went down on one knee shortly after meeting Liz and reading her story. It was some feedback happening. Can we just ask all the participants to mute themselves? Thank you. Thank you. The couple were married the following year and Elizabeth's love for Torah, her mandate to unite Jew and Gentile, ignited a fire within Jamie's heart to walk this journey with her. This dynamite duo has traveled near and far to share their beautiful story, mending hearts and changing lives. Liz's burning passion for Israel and her people has led to her and Jamie organizing many Woven Destiny concerts, uniquely joining the two people groups through the arts. So successful were these events held during the Feast of Tabernacles that Elizabeth was invited to join an international all Jewish women's organization to become one of the first Christian chair ladies of a branch appropriately called Ruth Branch, where the main objective is to raise funds for Israel but for Elizabeth, more importantly, to unite God's people and change mindsets after so many years of alienation and animosity toward each other. To date, a sisterhood between Jewish and Gentile women has been formed that is awe-inspiring, and they work together a testimony that this unity brings God's blessing. As Elizabeth says, a beautiful foretaste of the world to come. Over to you, Liz. Is that, am I on? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. great. We can. Okay. And um, right, well, I just want to firstly thank the speakers that have come on especially Daron and Omri under such um, bizarre, almost um, surreal circumstances. So we really want to say thank you. And to Bruce and Jackie, uh, we've really become like family. And um, yeah, what can we say um, for the technical team or tears? There's just no words, Jamie and I have for the, the commitment that you've shown towards this project. And then thanking all our Jewish and Christian friends logging on tonight, especially our Jewish part of the family. Now that Israel is under such attack, our hearts are really going out towards you at this time. And we pray that peace will be restored soon. Then before I get going, I just want to thank you from my mother, bless her heart, who asked me to please thank you all for having supported us for all these years. And this comes from our precious 91-year-old mom. Yeah, so well, tonight my task is quite difficult in those few moments um, to lay a foundation physically and spiritually. Um, we'll start your video, Liz. Guys? Um, now we can see you, Liz. Oh, can you? I can't see myself. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that. Okay, where did I get up to? Sorry, guys. Um, let me go back to about my task tonight in laying a foundation spiritually and physically about the importance of this project and in these crazy times. But before that, I just want to 
firstly say why we chose today for this event, because um, traditionally in the Christian church, it's Ascension Day. And the day that um, Jesus was supposed to have ascended into heaven after his um, death and resurrection. And it was 10 days before Shavuot, which is um, Pentecost. And just before he ascended, he gave his he gave a message to his disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait there for at the Feast of Shavuot to be empowered from on high. And we know that Shavuot is the most one of the most powerful um, convocations that God gave his people. And that is when the Torah was given. And that is the whole bedrock of the whole of the cosmos and that he gave to the Jewish people. And without this outpouring of the Holy Spirit that happened to the disciples that weren't only poured out onto the Jewish people, but the Gentiles, we were lost and without hope in this world. But now we have been included into this incredible Abrahamic covenant through our faith. That's why we belong together, Jew and Gentile. And God gave us these festivals, these more dim to teach us how we can become one. So, this is why, and also it's just that beautiful fulfillment of Jeremiah 30, 31 verses 37, where it says that he will no longer just write his Torah on tablets of stone, but on our hearts. So this is the exciting thing about the choice. And I want to rewind 20 years ago when I sat in a coffee shop, Mag and Bean Nochal, with Fiona Veach Smith about editing my book. And she's got a beautiful gift of seeing things when when God shows her. And while I was telling her the story, she had a vision and she stopped me in my tracks and she said, Liz, do you realize that this is not just a book? It's going to become a movie. And I looked at her as if she was completely nuts. And she said, I've just seen a picture of the globe. And at the top of the globe is a volcano and the lava is going around the whole globe. So I said, well, <laughs> that's, that's amazing, but let's, let's just do the book. Well, it so happened to be the day of 9-11. When we got home after our meeting, of course, we were all told to turn on our TVs and we saw this mayhem happening. And there again, Fiona heard a voice saying again, today mayhem has been sown on the earth. But in that coffee shop, I have planted a seed of hope. And, you know, that hit me right in the kishkas and made me realize that, hang on, maybe this is a, a thing of God, birthed of God. So, you know, 20 years ago, we've been tracked. Jamie and I, the last thing we've ever wanted is to make a movie. You don't do this for fun. You've got to know that there's a bigger purpose than just <clears throat> making a movie to make money or whatever, or tell a story. This is a story of, I believe, um, that God has reserved for now. It couldn't have happened any sooner than now. And it's crazy because you just look at the globe and with lockdowns and, you know, pending all sorts of doom and gloom. But this is just when people are needing a story of hope. And I want you to just cast your minds back to many of the greats, the biblical greats. And you think of Abraham, how he was faced having to sacrifice his son. And then you think of Moses having led millions of Jews out of Egypt and then standing at the Red Sea with the enemy on their backs. You think of Joshua facing the giants going into the promised land. You think of David with Goliath. You think of Esther, you know, and her people with the annihilation on the, the, on the horizon. And then, of course, Ruth. Every single one of these greats of, our Bible, of the Bible are, were challenged with a choice. They all had a choice, whether to believe God or not. And, you know, we serve a God of the impossible, the one that does things against all odds. And that's why this movie, for me, is still holding so much, so much potential, because the whole team feels a bit like me. They can hardly explain why they have still stood the course of, you know, of time, because it's, it's a miracle, really. And... I know those that financially partner with us, they will see this way beyond an investment in the physical. 
They will see it as an investment in the spiritual because this movie is ultimately way beyond a little young girl, Christian girl falling in love with a fervent orthodox Jew. It is way beyond that story now. It's a story about God's ultimate story of the restoration of all things, Jew and Gentile. And that cannot happen until the time of the end, before Mashiach comes. And this is why I believe there's such a blow up even in the Middle East, because the enemy is after everything that is dear to God. And that is his people, Jew and Gentile, that believe in him, his land and his city. And this, the war is not flesh and blood. It's against powers and principalities in the spirit realm. So whoever partners who has come alongside us have all known this big picture. And now the ones that partner us financially are going to have to know this big picture. And I know that they will reap their reward physically on a monetary level. But their reward in a physical and a spiritual level will be outweighed. So, And I know that God has brought us this far. Therefore, he will create a gap, a moment in time where we are able to make this movie Thank you, Deron. Thank you, Omri. Thank you, Martez. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Inga. Thank you, Faye. All those that have, yes. yes, Bruce, everybody who has invested financially already. It is beyond Jamie and I's understanding, but it can only be God. So I think that's enough from me. And I want to just say the story is truly an end time story of the one new man and i think the story will bring life love hope understanding change mindsets and give everybody a choice as well about who do they serve and what are they all about actually deep down so um i hope that has created a little bit of a platform going forward so thank you guys and back to you martez Thank you so much, Liz. Before I hand over to I think it's time for us to draw a prize. So the first prize tonight is a copy of the Choice book. For those of you who have not read it, get your tissues ready because you are going to be crying, tears of sorrow, tears of joy. It really is the most inspiring, wonderful book, which is why I obviously am on board as well. And um, it's changed countless lives already. So without further ado, Jamie, could you please draw our first winner? And while Jamie, before you announce that, I just wanna say for anybody who would like to purchase any of the prizes that we are actually giving out tonight, you can just pop us an email. Jamie, please unmute yourself and let us hear who's won. Hello, congratulations, number 31, A Magical Age. <laughs> Who Jay? is that? Mm. 31. The name's going to come. Hanali. Oh. Woo! Yeah. Well done, Hanali. <laughs> She's a still in Bosher. Ah, well done, well done Hanali. That's fantastic. Yeah, awesome. Our next speaker is Daron Iran. Daron is a well-established Israeli producer-director with over 25 years of experience in feature films, TV dramas, and documentary films. As a filmmaker and entrepreneur, Daron has produced over 60 features and TV film series for the Israeli and international markets and has won many awards and accolades and brings with him in-depth knowledge of the industry and a track record of success. Besides his work as a filmmaker, Duran has initiated and realized the Good News magazine, which focuses on the positive sides of society, science, and the arts. He is a member of the Israeli Association of Periodical Press. He has published the novel Loneliness Behind the Camera, and the acclaimed academic book being a producer for the cinema and television departments of Israeli universities and colleges. 
Duran received an excellence award from the International Forum of New Cinema, Calcutta in 2002, as well as a special tribute award for entrepreneurship in Israeli film and television from the Society of Commerce and Industry in Israel. Duran has also been part of the jury in Sofia International Film Festival and TLV Fest. In 2008, the Kolkata Film Festival conducted a retrospective of Duran's work entitled Celluloid Pearls. And in 2009, the Pune International Film Festival held a retrospective of Duran Aaron's work, showcasing seven of his films. Duran will be sharing why he agreed to come on board the choice. Over to you, Duran. You hear me, guys? Yes, we can. Okay. All right. First of all, thank you, Martiz. I I, I heard you, and uh, I didn't know this guy. It's <laughs> it sounds it sounds <laughs> okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for all what you say about me. You have a very good investigator who, who got this uh, this uh, details about me myself. Um, I want to tell you something about, about this project. Um, during the last year, the COVID-19 COVID year, which was awful to cinema creators and television creators, I succeeded to uh, direct two movies in Israel. And one of them uh, by the name Betrayal was uh, officially selected to Sofia International. And uh, it was screened uh, two months ago couple of months ago, and the television in Bulgaria interviewed me in, in the Zoom, and they asked me, after so many movies and TV dramas and series, what, what is your, your most, the most important project you've done? So I answered them, my next project. And I told them about my next project. So I would like to tell you all of you that the choice is the most important project I'm dealing with. And I'm praying that it will start soon. Um, as a creator, the filmmaker and, and director and producer, I'm, uh, people uh, say that I'm very naive because I believe that cinema and television can change way of thinking and way of behaviors. Um, and change thought part, uh, uh, patterns in societies. And we saw it uh, all over the history of the motion pictures. The choice will bring together believers and not believers from Christian world and Jewish world. And these days it's a very important, very important point. I believe that it is our duty, especially as artists to uh, especially during these times. And all of you knows what's happened in Israel now. Actually, it's, it's a, quite a miracle that I'm here and, and no missiles on Tel Aviv. So it's maybe, maybe your pray, uh, maybe God uh, uh, heard you. Usually this time there are a lot of missiles in Tel Aviv. So um, uh, I believe that, that uh, our duty as artists, especially these times, is to make our world better for us and for our children, especially for our children. And, uh, and through uh, making this movie, that's what we do, or this series, that's what we do. The choice is very good step to achieve that. Um, I, met, I met Liz, this uh, wonderful soul in Israel and in South Africa. And I believe uh, uh, that my target is with your story to bring love and hope to this world, to my children and your children. And, um, and with this movie, we're gonna do it. This is my reason to, to, to be here and to, to pray every day that this series will come through. Amen, Daron. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. And yes, God's hand is so, 
so in this project and we are all just absolutely blown away blown away by the miracles so far so thank you thank you very much our second prize this evening is a print of the Emmanuel painting, one of Liz's gorgeous, gorgeous paintings. The lucky winner of this print on canvas is called Emmanuel. It has become very well known and sold to people all over the world. It's enjoyed both Jew and Christian and the writing in Hebrew says, blessed are you, O Lord, King of the universe. We'll obviously be in touch with all of you who win this evening. And now over to you, Jamie, who is our second prize winner? Am I there? Hello. You there? I must admit, I was a very early bloomer. I had my midlife crisis at, at this age. The number that has come up this time is number 36. Hey, 36. <laughs> And the winner is Ingrid Thomas. That is so much. I wanted to win that prize. I'm delighted. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> That's so <Yeah>. good. <laughs> Wonderful. Our next speaker this evening is screenwriter Omri Rose. He's an award-winning writer for his films, Achan and Ezra. Outlaw and Bicycles and Balloons. His feature work includes Let It Snow, Egregor, and as a prolific script doctor, Omri has written on numerous screenplays, including Time to Fly, set to film in 2021, this year, with famed action director Spyro Rizatos and Mira Flores to be directed by none other than Duran Iran. His screenplay Terminus was top 10% at the Blue Cat Screenwriting Contest and is now in development to film in 2022 with director Peter Lindmark. Outside of film, Omri's short stories have been published as part of Cardiac, Cardiac Stories Tales for a Dying Son and the prestigious Mexican literary magazine Casa del Tiempo. Omri has also written for numerous video games, including The Viet, Bot Vice, and Strikey Sisters, as well as Warden of the Isles and Endless Pit of Doom. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Omri, and sharing your thoughts from a writer's perspective. Thank you, Omri. Thank you very much, Martez, and everyone for, for joining us this evening. Uh, like Doron, I'm, I'm in Israel at the moment, so I'm also Thankful that uh, it's a little bit quiet, so I'm able to, to speak. Um, where to begin on this journey? It's, it's such a journey. And um, as a writer, I was brought into this project um, through Delon initially, who I had worked on uh, a previous script with. And uh, he told me about this project and this incredible true story uh, involving Israel and South, South Af Africa and, and Liz and I just, I had to know more, of course. Uh, I was very eager, naturally, to, uh, to work on a script that, that took place in Israel as well. And so uh, when I had that first uh, conversation with Liz, how could I not be enamored by her and her incredible, incredible story? Uh, and, and then it was just a matter of figuring out how to approach it. Um, there had been several previous iterations of screenplays. There's, of course, the, the tremendous book and of course, there's the story itself, uh, her true story that is different from also the book in some ways and different um, from the screenplays that existed before and finding out how to piece them all together and make it all work was, was an immense joy more than anything else. Uh, obviously, there are certain hurdles you have to overcome in adapting and figuring out what goes in and what goes out. and. Um, some heartfelt conversations with Liz, trying to work our way through finding what the heart of the story that was um, the best way to tell it. And uh, I, I remember very vividly, and uh, I'll never forget it, uh, that when I sent in that first draft that I had, had done for the story to Liz, I, I got a message from her after she had read it. And uh, Liz uh, 
is known to send these lovely long voice messages. And uh, I got this message very quickly after I had sent it. And I hope Liz doesn't mind that I'm sharing this, that it, she, was, um, she was in tears, which at first was a little shocking to me because I was concerned if she wanted to fire me and get rid of me and throw me away. But uh, uh, on, on the contrary, she was, um, she was in tears. She was moved by, by the story and that moved me tremendously. Um, she said some incredibly kind things that uh, will stay with me forever. And I think when, when people come together with a shared vision of this betterment, you know, a story that, that wants better for the world and is about bringing people together, uh, it can't fail because if everyone's coming at it with the right place, full of heart, there's nothing that can go wrong here. It's just a matter of time that it will all come together and will make something beautiful and special. Uh, it's actually interesting that today is also uh, Eid. So Eid Mubarak to anyone who's celebrating that, you know, we have choices in life. And even though Israel is under attack right now, like this, this film, it's about bringing people together. And I think if we make this film, when we make this film or TV show as, as it is now and is it a race, it is going to bring people together because that's what it's about. It shows that no matter who you are, where you're from, you can come together and we can find connections. And so I'm, I was incredibly delighted and happy to work on this and I'm thrilled for the future of this project and onward and upward on this fast moving train. Omri, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. And yes, it is a privilege for all of us to have you on board. And I also want to say thank you again for tonight because we know that you need to rush off to a very <laughs> pressing appointment. So we bid you goodbye and you. have a blessed evening and meeting and we shall be talking soon. Thank, thank you, you so everyone. much, Omri. Take care. Bye. Well, on to our third prize. It is the It's Time calendar and a set of cards. This beautifully illustrated calendar was compiled and designed by Michelle Moller, who commissioned Liz to do the artwork, a wonderful tool to teach us Christians how to walk in the ways of the God of Israel. And it's highly recommended to order your own copy as well. So over to you, Jamie, who is our next winner? Right. This is, for, for certain people, these are like two magic numbers. Almost we need one more added to it. It is number 77. Two seven, 77. Woo! There we go. Our winner is Serena Erasmus. Congratulations, oh, Serena. Nice. Wonderful. Wow, thank you very much. Exciting. You're so welcome. Thanks for joining us. Our next speaker this evening is Bruce McDonald. I first met Bruce McDonald in 2014 when he had just completed The Perfect Way and I was privileged to attend its screening, its first screening to a live audience. This faith-based film starring Scott Eastwood, Cheryl Ladd and Patrick Lister led me to approach Bruce about the choice. However, he was in the midst of distribution and very busy with little time for anything else. Four years later, I found myself in Bruce's office, standing in for Liz, as mentioned previously. I will never forget his words of God is putting his team together. Bruce is our executive producer. He is a multi-skilled filmmaker, having directed international feature films with A-lister cast, Scott Eastwood, Cheryl Ladd, Billy Zane, Rutger Hauer, and Jackson Rathbone. His films have released theatrically around the world. The Perfect Wave released in 2015 and in 2018 in the USA in over 800 theaters. More recently, among other projects, Bruce completed five short films for A21 UK. Two were shot in South Africa and three in the Dominican Republic. 
The films are biographical shorts which tell of the atrocities of people trapped in modern day slavery. This year, Bruce has been nominated for a humanitarian award for excellence in film production. Additionally, his sex tourism film won best human rights film at the Cannes 2021 World Film Festival. And Bruce is joining us this evening from his new base in Portugal and will be sharing his thoughts on the choice as a three-part TV series. Welcome, Bruce. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Martez. Hi, hi everybody. Um, it's kind of weird having a Zoom um, chat about all of this, but um, it's hit a point of, of, of great excitement and um, is in a really, really exciting place. And my topic of um, discussion is um, why a TV series. Um, but before I get into why a TV series, I'd firstly like to say we've put together the most amazing team. Um, to have a story like Liz's and for her story to be surrounded by huge talent really, really brings us to life. Um, getting a director like Daron as our, as our leader is the perfect platform from which to um, build this ship. Omri's script really took the project up a, a huge level. It's a beautiful read and it really just brings the, the story to life. Um, having somebody like Martez with such huge passion and drive and who's driven this project for the last four years and shown great staying power is an absolute privilege to, to, to work with her. Um, and yeah, just each and every participant that I've worked with on this project has kept my passion um, going. I mean, it's, it's not an easy thing birthing uh, a project. It's not an easy thing for a mother to birth a child. And this is our, our collective baby and we've been nurturing it um, for the last few years. And I believe now it's ready to be birthed. The big discussion that we've been going through is the difference between feature films and, and TV series. And this project can go either way. Um, it's written as a beautiful one part um, feature film. It can quite easily be divided up into a three part um, TV series, which is what we've um, currently done. And it, it just reads perfectly. And with COVID and what's happened and what's happened with cinemas around the world, it's become very clear that more people are watching television. In fact, cinemas in most countries are, are, are shut. Um, and TV series are the perfect thing to sit and grab your attention for three nights or binge watch and watch all three in, in one go. So my suggestion to the team was with Liz's story and with her, with the script, the way it stands and the amount of rich information that we have uh, available to us in content, beautiful um, locations, um, rich characters, um, amazing, uh, uh, I'm repeating myself, amazing locations. I really believe we can divide this into three parts and, and create something that is absolutely gripping and something that um, at the end of one, you'll want to see two, and at the end of two, you'll want to see three, and at the end of three, um, you'll probably be crying. Um, and yeah, the script has, has amazing elements in it. It's got laughter, it's got action, um, it's got uh, the weepy moments and it's obviously got the love moments. So I think we've got something very special and very excited to work upon it, very excited to work as a team member and um, yeah, excited to see what this webinar brings and, and, and how it moves and evokes people to come aboard with us on this journey, which I believe is in the final stages. Bruce, thank you so very much. Yes, we are so excited to move this forward and the time is now. We would like to announce the fourth winner.
This time the prize is a Shabbat Shalom booklet and DVD. This prize with its quirky title is a booklet. It's actually called Shabbat Shalom and all that jazz. And it comes with a DVD. It's created by Liz and it has impacted many lives with her unique way in explaining how we as Christians can walk these wonderful ancient paths hidden from past generations, but now made known. Jamie, could you please announce our next winner? Number 93. Sure. Number 93. <laughs> 93. Wow, Johanna Creel, my friend from Robertson. Johanna Creel, congratulations. Stunning. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. Our next speaker is none other than Jackie DeLange, speaker, TV personality, Joy Travel Tour Director, and Managing Editor of Joy Magazine. Jackie has been a part of Liz's journey for many years and has exciting news to share about Joy's new coffee table book. Over to you, Jackie. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for um, the opportunity tonight. It is always so special to see a labor of love come to fruition. And we, as Joy Magazine, has, have walked a long road with Liz and are so excited uh, to see the start of this journey. And I really believe that God is going to take this message around the world. And the Lord is so amazing with his timing because um, we, because the travel um, to, we, we take biblical pilgrimages to Israel and other nations. And obviously we haven't been able to do that over lockdown. So out of necessity, we were forced to think of something to do. And we put together this incredible collection of articles and for all the years that I've known Liz, I have been so struck by her incredible painting of Emmanuel and wanted to use it on the magazine for so many years, but it was just never the right opportunity because um, the, the size of the painting doesn't quite fit the magazine parameters. And when we were putting together this publication, which is a handbook for every Christian to answer all those big questions that we all struggle with. Um, what happened is I spoke to my mom, who actually is um, the owner and publisher of Joy, and I said to her, now is the time to do this beautiful mm -hmm. painting. And so when I contacted Liz, uh, she actually, I, I said to her, would you consider allowing us to use this? And she said to me, Jackie, absolutely, thank you for the opportunity and she said, you wouldn't believe it, but we are finally ready to do what we've been planning for so long with the choice. And I just said to her, isn't God's timing just phenomenal? Because we have been able to, not only in the publication, but also online, be doing some promotions for Liz and all her projects that she's working on. So there's just a sample of the ad that speaks about the movie. So... Yeah, we are excited for you, Liz and Jamie and the whole team. And uh, we just know that God is never late. He's never early, but he's never late. And he's always on time. And he has got an incredible inheritance stored up for you and the hundreds of thousands of people that are going to be impacted. And I actually believe that your uh, decision to create it as a series is so God-inspired. And as Bruce said, it's the right platform and format for a time such as this. So we are so excited and we are equally as excited about this amazing book. And we encourage each and every Christian to uh, take one of these collector's editions to purchase it from the retail stores, because this is a handbook that's essential for every Christian. And I want to just finish by saying that um, one of the articles that we have in this book, and I know that they are listening now, Mark and Vivian from ICEJ, who are such dear friends of ours, uh, Vivian gave us a really important article on Israel and questions about Israel. And so it's something that every Christian needs to have in their library. Thank you, 
Jackie. Thank you so very much. And thank you for this beautiful publication and for honoring the choices journey in it as well. And you're all going to be so excited to hear that our fifth prize Our final prize this evening is none other than this beautiful collection coffee table magazine. So, Jamie, please announce this lucky winner. I think everybody is going, oh, my gosh, <laughs> just going to run and read what's in there right now. Sure. How do you keep people in suspense? I don't suppose you're allowed to. The time is running out. 87. Congratulations. 87. 87. Not my age, but... Nearly. <laughs> Veronica. Veronica. Yeah! Wow. <laughs> I have to say yeah. something about Veronica. This is awesome. Veronica has been so instrumental in moving the Choice Project forward over the years. She has this incredible band called Zamar and has graced us with their incredible presence and phenomenal talent on many occasions. So, wow, congratulations, Veronica. Right, thank you so much, Jackie. And now we are on to our next speaker, none other than Jamie Campbell. Jamie's account of meeting Liz and the moment he proposed has me in tears every time. And I've heard the story many times and I've cried every time. It's just so beautiful. His love for Liz, his leap of faith and commitment to this journey is beyond inspiring. I am bowled over by his strength, yet quiet confidence that only a man deeply and securely in love could have. Please meet the man who published the first edition of The Choice, who bowled Liz over, becoming her prize, the husband that God had chosen for her all along. Everybody, Jamie Campbell. Thanks, Martez. And if anybody hasn't read the book, then you're not going to understand the impact of tonight because the story is so beautiful. So I just want to encourage you guys, whoever's out there and hasn't read it, get hold of a copy. Because it's truly, like the subtitle that I put on the book was, A Woman Who Dares to Believe God. And I've been so encouraged over the years with Liz's faith and determination. And I remember when I first read the book, and I read about when the part where the rabbi asked her the question, and Liz answered, and then lost everything and the marriage was cancelled. And I just thought to myself at the time, if God has ever got a wife for me, then I, this is what I want and need. And my secret little heart's desire for many years was I wanted to marry an Eastern Cape farmer's daughter mm -hmm. because I grew up in Queenstown, went to Queen's College, and Elizabeth was not only a, a farmer's granddaughter and daughter but she was born in Queenstown so what a miracle for me and but Martez you come up first the first thing I thought of when, when this short talk of mine was I'll never forget a meeting with you or meeting you phoned up one morning when we were about to start with the teaser and most of the crew and people had arrived at your home and you phoned and Liz handed me the phone and he said, where's the money? What are we going to do? What's in the bank? What's in the bank? Well, I think both Liz and I, the color drained out of us. But within four hours, 100,000 rand was put into our bank account. The next day when you were shooting, you got hold of Liz and said, Elizabeth, we've used up the first 100. And Liz went off to the bank and put right there in another Still to this day, anonymous, 100,000 rand was put into the account. So, and we landed up with a teaser being a, literally a million rand short teaser being done for 200,000. So thank you to every single person. And Romana, you were awesome, my brother. You were so awesome. And when you first came on board, that's something sparked inside of me. And you are an absolute key part of what has happened and where it's going to. And... 
Yeah, like Rabbi Franklin, the rabbi that asked Liz the question said, Elizabeth, your story makes the Thornbirds look like Mickey Mouse. So it really is an incredibly, incredibly powerful, powerful story. And when we were in the States leaving JFK Airport, we got a phone call from one of Michael Douglas's guys or partners, whatever, from Columbia Pictures. And I mean, I could just see Liz's face asking they wanted to do the choice he'd read it and he thought this is incredible but anyway it, it just wasn't to be because the contract didn't quite suit at the time the other thing that has really inspired us i think is that every single cent that has come in for this project at every level traveling to 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 israel paying the script writers has all come in cash paid up front by incredibly credible, incredible donors, God's miracle donors. And you know who you are and we love you and bless you. And my last question quickly to end off from my side is why are we so committed to this project? Well, first of all, and really is just like everybody has said, so many prominent people on board. Thank you guys so much. Romano and Duran and Omri, I wish you were back on online here because your script is the first script I cried. And I've listened to this love story many times of my wife being in love with another man. <laughs> and now uh, it just really touched me very deeply. You caught it. You caught it. Bruce, um, so many times I've heard you say, and once in Constantia, when we walked out the car together saying, Jamie, this will be a movie. This will get out there. And that's what we believe. And Martez, thank you, sweetheart. Janine, our auditor, one of the top auditing companies in South Africa, Galbraith and Rushby, unbelievable. Andrew, our entertainment lawyer, who's also now apparently in Portugal. And lastly, for our very close and precious family that have walked with us closely from America, Faye and Inga, we love you, bless you. We truly have the best best in the industry and all I can say to you is we know that the whole world is crying out the Jews are crying out for their Messiah to to return and this movie I really believe can bring that about because as Jew and Gentile get drawn together and the one new man comes forth as it speaks about in Romans 9 10 and 11 but we need you we need you to partner with us and unfortunately it takes money too but we love you all. Bless you and thank you for joining us. Jamie, thank you so much. And oh my goodness, it's just those memories have come flooding back from those days of the teaser and all the miracles that happened there. That in itself is another story. Now we are going to move on to a question and answer session. So for anybody who has any questions about the movie, about the series, please fire ahead. And Bruce is on standby. Unfortunately, Duran has had to leave us now as well to get back to family. But um, if you have any questions, please fire away. Thank you. I have a first question. Bruce? Ingrid Thomas is asking, how can we support you all in this wonderful quest? Well, I guess uh, there are two ways that um, we could get support. And the, the, the first one is um, your prayer would be a, a wonderful support to the team, to the project. Um, and secondly, um, ask me to put on my video. Okay, my video is on. Thank you. Um, and um, the second thing is obviously we're trying to raise the finance to make this first pilot episode. So if you have the means or anybody else that you know has means to sew into a project like this, we'd be deeply grateful. And um, yeah, I hope that answers your, your question. Fantastic. Thank you. We're just waiting for the other questions to come in. The second question is from uh, Joe Olson. 
He's asking, what is the budget? How much do we need to raise? Um, we're trying to keep this um, at a very, very low figure. So we believe we can do the first um, pilot episode for, for in the region of um, 350 to 450,000 um, US dollars. Um, all of that is recoupable because once we um, get a sale or a streaming partner aboard um, to finance the next two episodes, we'd obviously recoup um, on the first episode that's been made. Fantastic, fantastic. And um, I just want to say to the attendees, you can use the chat function to ask questions to Bruce. He will um, answer them for you. I'm, I'm thinking of the lookbook, Bruce and Mottes, the lookbook that I can maybe just mention that as well. No, I mean, the lookbook's been really well done and it's very conclusive. Um, it has all the information of who, who we've approached with regards to cast. We've got a top um, American casting um, director involved who will help find the right people at the right price. Um, it's who we're going to use for post-production. It's examples of locations. Um, it really has been beautifully put together. I think it's a 60 page document. Fantastic, fantastic. We have another question for you. Hi, uh, Thomas says, thank you. Please will you provide the details to contribute financially via email? Um, that, that's out of my hands, um, Thomas. I think somebody else will, will do that. But um, yeah, they can certainly do that. Thank you. Bruce, can we ask uh, just to come back to the banking details? We will be sending that out to the from the Choice SA 2021 email address, mm -hmm. and we'll also make that available on the Facebook platform. You're also welcome to uh, contact us on Telegram. We do have a Telegram group. I just want to ask Bruce for a project like this: should it be a movie, or uh, or if it moves over to a three-part series, what is the time allocated to construct something like this? Um, we, we, we're actually in a very, very strong place as we currently stand. Um, the screenplay is written. Omri's already done a, a three-part series um, in, in writing. Basically, um, your turnaround time is, is quick. Um, you know, having done big films myself, normally your pre-production is in the region of six weeks um, before shooting. Um, on the pilot, I think we could compress that to um, four weeks. And we, we're actually really hoping that we can do the entire pilot um, first episode in Israel. And, you know, the word that we haven't used this evening, which I think is an absolute key, is we want to be authentic and we want to be real. So we want to shoot in the real places. We want to make this film feel like you're there and feel that you're in the right place at, at, at the right time. Um, so Doron has found most of the locations in um, Israel and I think we're going to try and shoot the first episode in about 15 days and uh -huh. um, post-production is a lengthy process always. So, you know, one could consider another two or three months to finish that. So the first episode from start to finish would be anything between four and six months. Fantastic. That's something we never thought about because normally, you know, the general knowledge amongst people like yeah. us who watch television and Netflix shows is that it takes years. Yeah, so it's years. wonderful to hear. There was someone that raised a hand. Uh, will you just unmute yourself and ask Bruce a question? Can I just, can I just go back to that? We've, yes. done, we've done the years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> most of the work is, is, is really getting a screenplay to the point where you're ready to shoot. Um, you know, our character Bibles are done. The, 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 the script is the film's Bible. Um, and when you have a good script, you normally have a good film. Um, so that's what takes the time is, is, is creating that foundation from which everything is built. And the next foundation is obviously choosing a team and developing a team. And, you know, our team has evolved over the last three or four or five years. So 
the relationships are rock solid and the understanding of what we want to achieve as a team is solid. So a lot of that initial groundwork that does take a long, long time, we, we, we already have done that. Fantastic. So the foundation has been laid. Wonderful. Joe Olson is asking, are you anticipating shooting in Israel soon, considering what's happening globally at the moment? Gee, that's a, that's a question. That's <laughs> I, I was wondering. <laughs> it's difficult to answer. And I mean, you know, Duran shot during COVID, as he said, and, um, you know, we, we, we live in a very turbulent world at the moment. And I think that if we got the money, we would, we would do it. We, yeah, we'd do it. Um, Can I come in there, Bruce? Yes. Um, yes, uh, with all my wonderful Jewish friends out there, Tamar and Tessa, who's all online, um, you know, if you look at it in the natural, you just want to pack your bags and go back home and say, forget it, because of the COVID and the vaccine. And, you know, it's just like a nightmare even for a, a Jewish person to go back to Israel with the strain from South Africa. But, you know, um, Daron was saying, if it's a business invitation and we're going on a business trip you're going to have to jump through the hoops we're going to have to go to a first destination like maybe wherever i don't know um turkey and have a 10-day isolation there then another isolation time in israel but we will do it as as deron says we'll carry on um you know doing auditions because you can do it online so the money has to be in the bank to get the wheels rolling and then there is a way to get there. And this is what the impossibility to the natural eye seems impossible, go home. But to faith, when God keeps on goading something, he will make a way where there is no way. And this is what we have to hang on to. Or else long time ago, we'd have packed our bags and said, oh, there's no hope here. That's COVID. That's a vaccine. There's the whatever. So I believe because of Daron's um, faith, typical Israeli, Typical. And <laughs> when we hear God, we act. And, you know, you don't look at the storm and the waves and the wind. You look at his word and you go by the promise he's given you and the rest will fall into place miraculously. And that's, hey, Bruce, do you agree with me? Absolutely. I mean, my, my, my company in South Africa um, throughout COVID was, uh, was shooting and, um, you know, we just had to follow the protocols of uh, of what was required to to shoot. It does make things a little bit more expensive, especially with all the elements that you need to put in place with social distancing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's very, very possible. Um, you know, with missiles flying around, that might be a little bit different. Um, but you know, we take this one day at a time, but I do believe that um, when we have everything in place, we will we will walk boldly to wherever we need to go and make this um, film come alive. Absolutely. I think what one thing, uh, what COVID has taught us, the one thing is that we need to be adaptable. Yeah. We have to. We have to be adaptable in these times. I've got Neil Newman from the border team. He's, in, he's situated in East London. Neil, would you like to ask Bruce a question or Liz? What do you feel the... Yes, please, a question. <laughs> a question for Bruce, please. Neil, that's Bruce, a... Bruce, what a do you feel is the earning potential? Neil, it's a big question that, um, you know, normally with the film you do a, a low, a mid and a, and a high projection. Um, and they do very... Uh, a hell of a lot and I'm giving you a long-winded answer it's very difficult to give an exact figure um, but what I do know is that when one can keep the budget tight in the region of 1.5 million dollars to package the entire project we will certainly be able to recoup and make at least 20 to 25 percent more on on a figure like that wow. fantastic very interesting and, and, and no, a, sorry, yes. sorry to interrupt. I'd rather be conservative in my in my answer because it's very easy to overpromise and underdeliver. And um, 
our mandate has always been to rather under-promise and over-deliver. Fantastic. Fantastic policy. I've got a lovely comment from Joe Olson. He says he can't, or he or she says they can't wait to welcome you all to Jerusalem. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'm going to give it a moment or so. Is there anyone that still has a question? You're welcome. The floor is open. Please raise your hand or uh, put your question in the chat function. You still have a moment to to uh, raise your hand. I know there was a lady that raised their hand earlier. You're welcome to do so. Yonita, I did confirm that was by accident. So she is- so Oh, okay. <laughs> by accident, no problem. Technology, you know. <laughs> if there are no further questions, I'm handing over to our MC for the evening, Mortez. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you for your valuable questions and we thank you once again for being part of this absolutely incredible journey. I also want to mention that if you would like a recorded copy of this evening, please let us know via email and we will absolutely send you that copy. Thank you so much again and I just want to wish you all the very best. Blessings to you all. Stay safe. We are praying for all of you in Israel. And thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. We are so super grateful for all the time that you've shared here tonight. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Martez. Thank you very much for the prizes. Thank you for joining, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bless you all. Bye. 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 You may now leave the webinar by clicking leave at the bottom of your screen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Natasha. Thanks, everybody. Natasha, Golden Key. Great. We appreciate yeah. you. Wonderful girls and Thank boys. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Love all the team. <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie and Jamie, love you lots. Love you. Too. I'm Tanya. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.